7 a.m. this morning on a very cold day. Runners take on the 2018 Chevron Houston Marathon. This is the first timer. So yeah. I'm really proud of her. All along the course, tens of thousands cheer on their friends, neighbors, and even complete strangers. Thank you, thank you very much. Don't be crabby, you're doing great! Good job, you did it! Tonight, we look at the winners and the records they set, and we explain why this heart transplant recipient is so thankful for her running partner. Plus, this man was given to the state, lost his legs, and is now a finisher. 33,000 runners from around the world coming to take over the streets of Houston, Texas. The path all these runners take isn't easy, but the reward is great for all at the finish line. Coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon is brought to you by the Houston Marathon Committee. Registration for the 2019 race is now open. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the finish line. I'm Tom Cook, and the 46th running of the Chevron Houston Marathon is now in the record books. Another big success. And so many of our friends, neighbors, and co-workers strapped on their shoes and ran today. 27,000 in all from all 50 states and 60 countries were represented in total. The elite field of runners was packed with more than a quarter million dollars in prize money on the line. And with so many talented runners on hand, many expected records to fall. But with such low temperatures, just one record fell, and that was in the women's half marathon for the fastest American half marathon. And joining me now is marathoner Callum Neff, and we talk about the effects of the weather today. Many of the elite runners said it was too cold today. Many of the average runners, if you will, said it was just perfect. What was it like on the course? Yeah, for the elites finishing in an hour, they were still very much in that early part of the morning where the sun hadn't risen yet, so they definitely felt, felt the effects of the chill that we had, but the, the runners in the back, you know, they had the, the sunrise and coming into the finish with the sun there, so it was intense, and they warmed up. You've run so much, would you consider this almost a perfect day, or would you like it a little warmer? It's about as close and perfect as you could get. All right, really. almost down to 34 degrees at the race start time, not mm -hmm. quite freezing. Now, on the men's side, we witnessed some incredible races with an incredible comeback. David Nunu now with more from the finish line. We're off with the uh, 46th running of the Chevron. As we've come to expect, a case for the dramatics towards the end of the Chevron Houston Marathon. Yira Yuanafu, who finished second last year, leading for most of the race, but it was Banzu Worku who saved his best for last, finishing with a time of two hours, eight minutes, and 30 seconds. Hold it up for number three. I got number three. Worku becomes three time winner in Houston. Because it is cold and windy, you know, at the, I know that I'll be a winner at the 35 kilometers, you know, mark. Uh -huh. So I was ready, you know, and uh, uh, I did it. Banzu says it was all about his pacing. Wow. You know, I knew that I'll be ahead of him at the later place because at this wind and uh, temperature also, I was keeping my pace, but I know that he will be, you know, uh, behind me and I, I run. Now in the Aramco Half Marathon, Jake Robertson ties his personal best with a time of one hour, one second. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> He just tied his PR. Oh man, I, I was I was just excited to be winning the race, but we're coming down the home straight. I saw it was so close to sub 60, and yeah, I'm I'm really upset. I missed that, but <laughs> what can you do? And he did this on a day that was frankly too chilly. For us, it was a little bit too cold. I really wanted to run the course record here, but I knew the conditions. It was going to be a tough one. Yeah, you heard at the end of the race, Jake Robertson say, oh, no, because he just missed, uh, missed breaking one hour, which would have gotten him a big bonus. Yeah. He just missed it. He wanted to set the course record, too. This is really a loaded half marathon field. We expected the record of 59-22 maybe to be broken today. It wasn't. Yeah, these guys were definitely racing to place. You know, the, the race kind of developed to form a, a large pack, and Jake positioned himself in there. You can see uh, sitting there in the back. You can just barely see him, and, and he's just saving his, biding his time, waiting for the right moment to strike, and he sure picked the right time. And he picked up so much uh, space in between them that really no one was close behind him. Which is surprising. You know, the field was so deep. You had one of the best marathoners in that pack, and when Jake put down about a 430-mile 
around the 11th mile, nobody went with them. Yeah, it's tough to keep up and make up that big distance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, well, for the full marathon, Bazu Worku of Ethiopia joins the three-time Houston Marathon winners list, but he had to overcome a 20-second deficit. He was 20 seconds or more behind. Big gap to make up. Completely out of sight. I was, you know, worried for Anafu watching him make a move so early. Uh, you know, he almost wanted to wait a little bit longer, and uh, Worku was confident that he would catch him. And Anafu made that move early on, maybe at mile 17 or yeah, 18. It, it turns out not to be the right thing to do, right? No, it wasn't. And he just maybe timed his nutrition or something wrong. But when that, you know, the wall hits, it's it's kind of too late. Yeah, and he just couldn't have the gas and make up it, make no. up the distance at the end. No, but made for an exciting race with uh, Worku coming back. He's won here twice before and he won again. Yeah, he's a great runner. Well, the racing on the women's side was also intense. In fact, it is the women who set that new record. David Nuno with more now on the women's race. <laughs> A fabulous day for the women at the Chevron Houston Marathon. Burke Tide De Gifa wins the marathon division with a time of 2 hours, 24 minutes, 52 seconds. And she was certainly grinning afterward. Here she goes. Yeah, she looks strong crossing the line. Uh, after 35 kilometers, I know that I have a confidence that I'm going to win. I'm going to be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win the race. Here's the winner right here. We almost had a course record for the women in the Aramco Half Marathon. Ethiopia's Rudy Aga wins the half with a time of 1 hour, 6 minutes, 39 seconds, beating her previous PR by almost a minute and a half. It was cold, but thank God, you know, uh, the race is very good, and I liked it. She's going to get it. She's going to get the American record, right? Here. And an American record was set in the half marathon, Molly Huddle. Good job, nine Molly. Seconds. New record right. by nine seconds. So unofficially, 67.25 is right. what she crossed? Yeah. The race was great. We had a, a really fast group of women, and we were just all running together really hard. So I took advantage of that, and I was lucky to have such fast women around me. I think I fell off the pack at 10 miles, and I was looking at my splits, and I knew it would be close. So I just tried to kick it in as fast as I could. Yeah, that's American Molly Huddle. That was a really loaded field as well in the women's half marathon. The half marathon American record was set today, and this remained a tight race from the start. Yeah, it was pretty incredible to watch. Uh, we were really expecting Jordan Hesay to be up there with Molly Huddle battling it out. That was the excitement, but we really only saw Molly get in that pack initially and didn't ever see Jordan. Yeah, and no one really um, set the pace or, or no one really took anything apart from the pace for a long time here today. Again, they were racing to place, not for time today, even though they were running very quick. All right, now to the women's full marathon. That race ended up being the fifth fastest time ever in the Houston Marathon. But was what was even more amazing was how long it took for the winner, Baruktai Tegev of Ethiopia, to take the lead. She just hung back there all the race. Yeah, it was almost concerning to watch. They had the pacers there with them, and uh, they were almost getting in the way towards the end. But, yeah, they, they sat with them, and I guess they were comfortable being led around the course. And you mentioned that At once near the end of the race, one of the pacers moved to sort of get out of the way, and he almost tripped her up. Yeah, that, that was the real concerning part. They, um, the pacers almost should have left them to race at that point. There was first and second place right there with each other, and we wanted to see the showdown happen, and they, they hung with their pacers a little. Yeah, you saw Baruch Taitagifa after the race. She looked like she hadn't even run a race. Yeah, again, she was just waiting for that final kick. All right, well, that's a great win for her today, and what makes the Chevron Houston Marathon so incredible are just the everyday people who run the race and their amazing stories. This woman had a heart transplant, and the man next to her, his daughter was the heart donor. Their story of hope and inspiration amidst tragedy. The finish line comes right back.